A strange weather pattern will be coming to the United States over the next few days, which is going to continue to bring a brutal heat wave to parts of the United States. But on the other hand, much colder weather is on the horizon. Additionally, more significant severe weather will be possible over the next few days, including damaging winds, large hail, and the threat of a couple of tornadoes. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And before we go into the actual weather i do want to point out that there was an 8.8 .8 magnitude earthquake just a couple of nights ago just off the coast of russia and there was a tsunami over in hawaii and even along the west coast of the united states luckily the tsunami waves are pretty small so it was luckily was not a destructive tsunami but i just want to throw it out there in case you missed that now right now across the country we aren't experiencing any sort of crazy weather but we are looking at scattered showers and thunderstorms for the last 24 hours that's what's been ongoing and then back over in the high plains we actually had a couple of tornadoes yesterday and i do think over the next few days we are going to continue to see a heightened risk of severe weather across the high plains and then another thing we need to keep an eye on is this right here a ton of moisture currently circling a high pressure system in the southeast and we actually could see a threat of an isolated tornado or two and on top of that scattered damaging winds will be a risk for a lot of people back along the east coast today and we'll talk more about that here in just a moment now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the united states over the next couple of weeks and to look at that we are going to look at our jet stream and our mid-level flow so right now we have a high pressure system that's kind of dominating the entire southern tier of the united states but on the other hand we have northwesterly flow that is coming out of canada right now and this is bringing colder weather to those in the midwest and the ohio valley and as we go into the weekend i am fully expecting that colder weather to continue to settle in across basically anywhere east of the rockies we are expecting below average temperatures for the majority of the lower 48 so that's really good news but another thing i want to keep an eye on here during the weekend is our weather pattern back along the west coast because we're actually going to continue to see troughing just off the coast of california and by the early portion of next week we could see the return of some significant severe weather now i think monday and tuesday will be primarily severe weather threats back over in the high plains and also back over in the northern plains but i do think by the middle and end of next week we could see the return of severe weather for those in the midwest and even back into the central and northern plains as a high pressure system continues to sit back over in the four corner states and we'll probably see a few trough ejections here across the northern tier of the united states so severe weather season for those in the northern tier of the country is not over yet we actually have a little bit more time here before our jet stream is just fully back up in canada which right now the gfs model is indicating that we'll likely start to see a very quiet severe weather pattern by the middle of august but at least for the next week or two there will be occasional severe weather events and then at some point i think in the next few weeks we're probably going to see our first hurricane in the atlantic ocean now the extreme heat for most of the country has finally started to subside but we still have extreme heat warnings in effect right along the mississippi river valley where heat indices and feel like temperatures will be easily above 100 over the next few days and then heat advisories in effect from dallas fort worth back towards central florida we also have flood watches in effect if you're back over in the northeast near pennsylvania new jersey maryland delaware this is an area that we have a moderate risk of excessive rainfall in place for today we are expecting a lot of rainfall today so if you're traveling today turn around don't drown and on top of that, if you're in a low-lying area, stay weather aware. We'll talk more about the flooding in just a moment, but I do want to touch on the temperatures for the next week or two. We are expecting below average temperatures across basically the entire Great Plains, mid-Atlantic, back through the Ohio Valley for the next few days, and then by early to mid-next week, we'll start to see the return of warmer weather, especially in the Great Plains where temperatures will likely go above 100, especially back over in Kansas and Nebraska. So that's pretty typical for this time of the year, but at least for the time being, again, the weather's really nice. Definitely a little bit of a different kind of weather pattern we haven't really seen so far this summer we're just dealing with 60s and 70s for high temperatures back over the midwest in the ohio valley and then by the second week of august we could be talking about another pretty extreme heat wave where we start to see the potential for record-breaking high temperatures it's a little too early to tell what's exactly going to happen though second week of august but that is probably what we're going to end up seeing when it comes to the temperature trends so the actual temperatures for the next few days are high temperatures as we go into saturday honestly look pretty nice for most of the country this is around if not just below average any anywhere east of the Rockies but if you're back over in the desert southwest we're talking about really hot weather but look at this again 90s back over in Texas 70s across the board in the Midwest even back through the Northeast and believe it or not I'll actually be vacationing in the Midwest for the first time over the next few days and the weather looks perfect so if you're anywhere in the Midwest again temperatures look phenomenal and severe weather does not look like it'll be a problem at least for the next few days we could see something though by the early to mid portion of next week high temperatures will be right back on the rise back over in Texas and Oklahoma back in the 100s by Monday 
Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday of next week. We're going to have brutal heat across the entire central and southern plain region back over in the northeast and across the Midwest in the Ohio Valley. Temperatures will be on the rise, but generally speaking, we're still talking about pretty nice weather. This is around average temperatures, if not even slightly below that. Heat indices for the next few days will continue to stay very hot if you're along the Gulf Coast, which is, again, very typical for this time of the year. Feel like temperatures, though, Saturday morning could be in the 50s, maybe even some upper 40s back over in the Midwest and the Northeast. So we might even need a light jacket on Saturday morning if you're anywhere in the Midwest or back in the Northeast. Sunday, Monday look to be basically the same. And again, extreme heat will return by the middle of next week across the Great Plains. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days. And we'll begin with today, which is Thursday. And we have two slight risks of severe weather in place. One back over in the High Plains. We also got one back over in a very populated area near Washington, D.C. in southeastern Pennsylvania. And then a few marginal threats of severe weather, which one of which is actually in Arkansas. And that is not an area that we've seen really any severe weather in over the last few weeks. So definitely a little bit of a shakeup there. But generally speaking across the board, the greatest concern will be damaging winds in both regions or really all three regions, large to potentially very large hails of possibility in Wyoming and Colorado. And though the Storm Prediction Center does not currently have a tornado risk outlined back over in the mid-Atlantic for today, I do foresee there being a potential for a couple of tornadoes this afternoon and into the early evening as a warm frontal boundary will be in place here. So definitely something to keep an eye on if you're back over the mid-Atlantic. Stay weather aware and have ways to receive warnings. And then on Friday, the threat of severe weather will continue across the high plains and back into the southeast where isolated damaging winds up to 60 miles per hour and quarter half dollar size tail is a possibility. Same thing on Saturday, another small marginal threat of severe weather in the high plains. As I said before, though, I do think the more significant threat of severe weather over the next two weeks will likely return sometime during the early to middle portion of next week. Majority of that should be back over in this region in the northern plains and the high plains, but I do think at some point we'll start to see the severe weather shift further to the east, perhaps into the Midwest. Now let's talk more about the timing of severe weather and flash flooding today, beginning with what's happening this morning. We already have a lot of rain out there anywhere from Indiana back into New York. This is mostly light to moderate rain, so really localized flooding is all that I would expect up there. By around lunchtime, storms will start to fire up. We might even have an isolated storm or two back over in Ohio and Indiana, and then a few storms will begin to fire up from the Appalachian Mountains near uh, southern Virginia all the way back into eastern Pennsylvania, where downburst damaging winds anywhere from 50 to 65 miles per hour, and then some large hail is possible out of these initial storms. Hail shouldn't be any larger than half dollars, and then by 4 to 5 o'clock is when I think at least a low, but not zero tornado risk will exist back over in southern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, perhaps even back over in Maryland and Delaware, where there will be a warm frontal boundary, and any storms that are near that warm front will have a decent amount of wind shear to work with, so there's definitely at least a low end chance of a tornado if storms can stay discreet. These will likely start to cluster together by 7 to 8 o'clock tonight, moving right across Maryland and also going to Delaware, New Jersey. So damaging winds will likely be a pretty big concern tonight. If you have any plans near the beaches as well, definitely stay weather aware. Frequent lightning possible with these storms. And then by 10 to 11 o'clock tonight, storms should be moving offshore and then we'll be done with this. And then as we go into Friday, more pop-up storms are possible. And these will be pretty widespread across the board, across the Dixie Alley and back through North Carolina and Virginia with some isolated large hail and downburst damaging winds anywhere from 60 to 75 miles per hour being a possibility. I could see there being a slight risk of severe weather introduced in a future outlook back over in South Carolina and North Carolina. That would be for downburst damaging winds. Now, in terms of total rainfall, we're expecting quite a bit of rainfall. If you're back over New Jersey, Maryland, or Delaware, though these numbers might not look crazy, we're at least expecting around one to four inches of rain in most locations today in New Jersey and also back into Maryland and Delaware, but localized areas could pick up between six to eight inches of rain. And in some of these urban areas, that is a lot of rainfall and poor drainage areas will definitely be impacted by this for sure. Now back over in the Central Plains, we're expecting storms to come right off the Rockies later today by around six to seven o'clock. Most of these storms will be right near Denver back into Southeast Wyoming, damaging winds around 60 to 70 miles per hour and some isolated hail and perhaps a land spout or two are a possibility today. Friday should basically be the same day. It's going to be basically Groundhog Day. We're going to be watching for the same sort of thing, damaging winds, isolated hail, and perhaps a land spout or two being a possibility. And then things clear out as we go into Saturday morning. And then beyond the next couple of days, we are expecting showers and thunderstorms to continue basically every single day, but high pressure will be building across the Ohio Valley in the Northeast. So most of the storm activity will be confined to this general area, not expecting anything super major, I think, through Monday. But as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, we got to keep an eye on the Rockies because we're likely going to at least have a couple of troughs over in this area. And any of them that can successfully eject over the Rockies could at least lead to an isolated to maybe scattered severe weather threat. 
especially in the central and northern plains. By the end of next week, we are kind of expecting just a messy weather pattern, nothing really super organized. But again, this is really still the general region to watch for, for a more elevated threat of severe weather throughout the first 10 days or so of August. It's going to be kind of hit or miss. A lot of these days are also going to be mesoscale days, which means that we're not really relying on, you know, troughs, for example, like low pressure systems, subnoptic features to essentially bring us severe weather. But any little low pressure system that we get can definitely elevate it and potentially bring some significant severe weather. So definitely something to keep an eye on. But generally speaking, nothing super organized for the next week or two. And as of now, the tropics look quiet. So in the Atlantic Ocean, we're looking at a pretty quiet time right now. I do think we're probably going to see some sort of tropical storm or hurricane at some point in the next few weeks. But as of right now, it is quiet. Let's hope it stays that way. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. And as I mentioned earlier in today's forecast, yes, I will be on vacation. This begins today, runs all the way through August 5th. I've not been on vacation in over a year, so it's a well-needed break. I'll actually be in Minnesota and Wisconsin on a little golfing trip. I've never actually been in the Midwest at all, so it should be fun, and it's definitely a new experience. I will mention, though, we will not have any live streams between now and August 5th, purely because I will not have a setup for it, but there may be a video or two if needed. If there's not really much to talk about, though, I'm not going to bother making a video. I mean, if there's something that we need to talk about, we'll definitely have a video, so stay tuned. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys all again in the next video or live stream.